Uh, good morning, and thank you for everyone for uh, coming here. Uh, I'm really proud uh, to be here. My name is Gilbert Wall, the mayor for the city of uh, Cupertino, and thank you for coming here for the uh, press conference. I have a, a short uh, statement that I want to make, and after that, I will uh, take uh, questions. Uh, last night, Steve Jobs, CEO of Apple Incorporated, announced at our city council meeting that Apple will be moving forward with his plans to build a state-of-the-art campus here in Cupertino. My, Mr. Jobs originally announced Apple's intent to build a new campus at the council meeting in April 2006. Apple has since purchased a 92 um, parcel in Cupertino that had previously belonged to HP. Apple now has a total of 155 acres in Cupertino in the area of the proposed new campus. We are excited to see this project moving forward. Apple has been a part of Cupertino since the company inception. In fact, Apple has been a member of our local Cupertino Chamber of Commerce for over 33 years. Steve Jobs also knows our area very well. He attended Cupertino Middle School and Homestead High School in Cupertino. Like his CEO, this is a company that has grown with us, with our city. Steve Jobs also knows our area very well. Uh, many of our neighbors, friends, and family have worked for Apple at some point. So it's not surprising that the company and the city share similar values, creativity, innovation, and appreciation of quality. Apple is the single largest employer in Cupertino, and its continued success represents an important and tangible indication in the vitality of our local business environment and economy. A hallmark of Apple technology has been the innovation and the high value of the company places on, de on design. We have learned to expect that Apple will make the same high standards to all of its projects. Our residents who work in Silicon Valley and people who work in Cupertino during the day expect innovation. No company embroils the value more than Apple. When Apple submits their building plans later this year, we know that we will be looking at a state-of-the-art facility and all the challenges and opportunities that will go along with that. The city of Cupertino is already is ready for one of the most sophisticated and advanced high-tech campus ever. Last night's presentation by Mr. Jobs confirms that in my mind that one of the city council's most important challenges and accomplishments has been to make sure companies like Apple can grow and thrive in our community. The review process for the project is the same as every project in Cupertino. The city will look for environmental impacts, including air, quality, traffic, et cetera. The project will come to the city council for approval for the fall in 2012. Following approval, Apple can submit building permits. Construction will follow and Apple and the city expect the new campus to be completed by 2015. Cupertino is ready for this. You can review presentations by S Steve Jobs and track updates to buy the project by going to our wonderful website at www.cupertino.org slash Apple. Um, I'm open to take uh, questions. Uh, yes, sir. Big chance this doesn't get done. Is there any possible chance that you guys will say no? There is no chance that we're saying no. Uh, as you know, Apple was founded here in uh, 1976. Uh, they have always called Apple uh, our home. Um, when I was growing up, I started with um, Apple IIs and Apple II Pluses and then Macs. And then uh, now we see you know, from iPhones to iPads to with yesterday with iCloud and today with the major announcement of this um, you know, more or less this mothership really has landed here in Cupertino. And this is going to be the one of the largest building with 12,000 employees, and we're very proud to have Apple here. I just have a follow-up. As Jobs reminded you last night, they're also the largest taxpayer. What did you think when uh, he responded uh, to a question by a fellow city council member last night about what can it bring to Cupertino? He said, well, we're the largest taxpayer. We'd have to move to Mountain View. What were you thinking when he said that? So as you, as you know, Apple was founded here in 1976. And whenever a company like set their roots here in Cupertino and Mr. Jobs actually went to school at Cupertino Middle School and Homestead High School, where my daughter also goes to school. And my daughter woke up this morning and she said that, wow, you know, Steve Jobs went to where I'm going. And I believe that his roots are here in Cupertino and I believe that he will stay here in Cupertino. And we have one of the leanest best city uh, staff here in uh, Cupertino, and we're ready to uh, meet his needs. Mayor, what do you think will be the biggest, I mean, obviously this has planning, review, environmental impact yes. reports. What will be the biggest challenge uh, in that process, uh, in that process? 
I mean, if Steve Jobs had his way, he would love to have his campus uh, tomorrow. As you know that he's renting a lot of space here in Cupertino. The company is just expanding um, bigger and, and, and larger. And I believe that uh, it has to go through um, CEQA, it has to go through environmental, and I believe that the process will probably take uh, two or three years. But we believe that we'll have the public hearing next year in fall, and, uh, and after that it will be uh, construction. It is a major project. It's going to look like something similar to like the Pentagon. And this is something that's not going to be built uh, overnight. But we're ready uh, to, uh, to accommodate. Sounds yeah. like the red tape will take longer than the construction. Does that concern you? Actually, I mean, I, I, mean, I, I just uh, respectfully disagree. I think that city government, uh, especially here in the city of Cupertino, Apple Computer is our number one sales produce, uh, and, and we depend on uh, sales tax. So we're ready to uh, do whatever it takes to um, bring in more, more staff people, bring in more uh, folks to uh, not speed up the process, but to accommodate them, to make sure that they're on track, on time, and have a well quality finished product. This is gonna be one of the greenest building uh, here in uh, corporate America and one of the best. And as Mr. Jobs says, you know, uh, folks from the, um, doing architecture or students are gonna come here and this is gonna be a destination uh, building site for people to come to Cupertino. Mayor, what would uh, Cupertino be like without Apple? That's a very uh, good question, and I think that we have invested so much in Apple Computer, and I think that with Steve Jobs' major announcement of iCloud um, yesterday, I think that we can we hopefully to see the total success of uh, of Apple. Maybe you can imagine a situation without Apple here. And I can imagine that because as you as you know, uh, they bought Hewlett Packard, um, and when they bought Hewlett, Hewlett Packard, we had other companies that also came in too, like Seagate. Uh, so there's other companies that will fall in the lead of Apple. A lot of the uh, apps are, are being built and a lot of people are, are coming in. So we see a lot of res residual business that will come after uh, with Apple and that will follow Apple's lead. Kit? Um, you guys seem very enthusiastic and excited at the meeting last night. Are they going to get special or preferential treatment during this process? All of our applicants are treated uh, fairly, definitely because Apple is our largest employer and uh, we want to make sure that we can accommodate them. So um, what will probably happen is that since we're such a very lean staff of about 150 uh, employees, we probably would have to hire extra staff to uh, accommodate them and it will uh, be wor worked in to make sure that it's cost recovery. How unprecedented is it to basically say there's no chance that it'll get turned down and that you're bas basically working with them to solve any problems that might arise. So, so that's, a, that's a fair question, and nothing is a, uh, is a sure thing. But I think that if you look at all the different companies, like when Hewitt Packard was thinking about, uh, should we come to Cupertino or should we stay in Palo Alto, where Hewitt Packard was actually, you know, grew up, founded in, in Palo Alto. If you listen to Mr. Jobs' uh, speech, you know, he was saying that he looked up to both uh, Mr. Hewitt and Mr. Packard as his role models uh, and, and, and got a job over there. Again, he's a hometown boy of, of Cupertino, and we're really proud to uh, have him here uh, in Cupertino, and I believe that we will have continuous success here in Cupertino. But is that pretty unprecedented? I mean, can you remember, remember a time when Cupertino basically had that attitude toward a big project? Um, every time that we have a large company that has a large sales tax produced, we have been very accommodating to that company. Thank you. And I guess that, Mayor, that's, that's the question is, how far will you go because Apple is such a part of the fabric of Cupertino. How far will you go in terms of making this process smooth for them? And I'm sure that Apple wanted some reassurances as well. We're not going to start this huge project without some assurances that you not necessarily bend over backwards to help us, but make this process as easy as possible. So how far will the city go to make that process easy? So as you know, Apple bought uh, the property back in 2006, 55 acres. Uh, two years ago, um, they bought another 96 acres from uh, Hewitt Packard. And we've been waiting very patiently when Apple's ready, because it's all market driven. I mean, we don't own uh, the property. And once Apple was ready to make the announcement and was ready to go, um, and of course, we did have some conversations with Apple about their, their vision, and they have prepared us in advance uh, about their project and about the, the, the generalist, general idea. 
and uh, we are ready and able to accommodate uh, going through the process. Why should the people of Cupertino embrace this? And do you think that it will actually um, save some city services by having this additional influx of tax money? That is a very good question. I really like that question. As you know, Sacramento is having a hard time with their state budget. And cities like Cupertino is dependent on sales tax. So with Apple coming in, uh, this is a huge shot in the arm uh, for us. And as you know, not only are we known for innovation with our high-tech companies like Seagate, like Apple Computer, and, um, and, and, um, and HP is, is leaving us, um, we're also known for our public school systems. We're known for our beautiful library that, that's out there. And we can tell our residents of Cupertino that you know, regarding your potholes, regarding your parks, regarding um, your um, city services, by Apple staying here, that will guarantee us. If you look at our neighboring cities and look at the city of San Jose, they're reducing their library hours to uh, three days a week. Here in Cupertino, we have our libraries open seven days a week, and we're maybe possibly adding four, more, four to six more extra hours. So while other cities are struggling with their services, with school, school resource officers, with um, sidewalks and everything, we can grow. And I believe that this is a wonderful announcement that Mr. Jobs has made. Is there a projected amount of tax base that you will get? Is there tax revenue? This is something that you would have to ask the staff because we protect uh, those uh, propriety numbers. Any concern that uh, Mr. Jobs was not scheduled to speak on the agenda? And um... Um, th That's a very good question. We received very short notice regarding his, uh, his um, surprise visit to come to speak to us. So as you know, Mr. Jobs is a very um, busy person. But um, we, when we were told that he was going to come, he showed up. And uh, as you see from the audience reaction, they were really excited. No concern, though, that it violated any kind of problems with uh, posting? Uh, no. No. It was under ceremonial manners. Yeah. Um, he was under oral communications. Mayor, I know you re uh, touched on this earlier, but can you just reiterate the timeline, what's next, and then from the environmental review process, how long that's expected to take, all the way to when the doors are likely to open. Can you just give us a broader idea of the timeline? Okay, so um, I'm just going to briefly uh, start a little bit, and I might ask RT to help me uh, just in case. Um, so Apple Computer, Apple Inc. is, you know, is a private company, and we've been waiting for five years for them to make this uh, announcement. So we would have to wait until they submit their plans uh, to the um, planning and building department. Once they submit uh, their plans, there'll be a process that they have to go through, including an environmental review, um, uh, plan checks, and we're projecting our uh, first public hearing at the Planning Commission to be in the fall of 2012, and shortly after that, it will go to uh, the City Council. And I think so smoothly, when do you expect the doors to open? Um, I believe, according to what Mr. Jobs said, I believe that will take about three to four years to build the campus. And again, you can get more updates on uh, cupertino.org slash apple. Uh, we have a wonderful website. I think that this is a great uh, announcement for the city of Cupertino, for Silicon Valley. Uh, we, you know, here in, in, in the state of California, all we've been hearing is about bad news. Academic times are not doing very good. People are having a hard time getting credit. But with Steve Jobs coming in, it gives a huge shot in the state of California, a huge shot for Silicon Valley, and a huge shot for the city of uh, Cupertino. I want to say thank you very much for uh, coming to the press conference today. If there's any additional questions, uh, feel free to contact me or our uh, city staff. Thank you very much.